Hey there guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at GTA 4 running with the DXVK API replacer. So right now you're looking at the game running with DirectX 9, which is what it defaults to. Now the game itself has one of the worst ports pretty much ever made, so even in modern systems it runs pretty bad. But what people found is that by using DXVK to replace DirectX 9 and essentially just convert it over to Vulkan, you get a noticeable improvement in performance, in theory at least. I'm going to take a look at what exactly that performance is going to be like on a system without a graphics card because most of the time that you see people talk about this it's usually in systems that already have a graphics card now you can see on the screen right now what graphics settings we're using here it's pretty much all at either high or very high though the view distance detail distance and vehicle density are lowered here so they're not maxed out or anything like that and we do have night shadows turned off as well in general though these are the most ideal settings to in the base game get a around a slightly above 30 FPS gaming experience. So as you can tell, the 1% lows are fluctuating a lot. And if you look at the frame times in general, there are consistent spikes that end up happening depending on what exactly is on the screen, but it never really fully levels out. In general, it really reminds me of what the experience was like of playing this game on the PlayStation 3 when it came out. Not in terms of the visuals, because the game was running at a much lower graphics setting and at a much lower resolution, but the FPS that we're getting here is very similar to what we were getting on a PlayStation 3 back in the day. Your overall performance though is going to fluctuate a lot if you're just going throughout different areas of the map. There are going to be certain areas where your 1% lows are going to be much higher along with your averages and then there will be others where you're going to be pretty much struggling to even stay at above 30. So in general it is going to be something to keep in mind and if you just pay attention to the frame times in general they're the thing that fluctuates the most here and it kind of lets us know that things aren't exactly going to be the smoothest here. And now if we just install the DX VK file into the game itself, we can see what it actually does to the overall performance. Now, one thing to note, of course, is that with DXVK, you do need the shaders to compile, and that's going to happen while you're playing the game. There is no pre-compiling or anything for it, at least not on the Windows version. DXVK actually works pretty noticeably better on Linux because of the fact that it can pretty much just directly run. It doesn't need to be a translation layer like how it is here on Windows. And I do actually plan on really soon doing some Linux testing specifically on that HP system that I managed to get my hands on with the 2400G. And we're going to take a look at what DXVK is like on there. But in general, what you're going to find with Vulkan is if you pay attention to those frame times, they stay relatively consistent. You'll see the occasional spike here and there, and that's usually things loading in and getting cached. You're going to see fluctuations all the time as new things are being loaded in. But after you play for a while, things will start to level off and the performance will be better. Again, anytime you enter a new area it's more than likely going to have some drops in one percent lows but pay attention to the frame times and you'll see how quickly things recover and we'll just jump ahead a little bit after i played for a good while to see what the performance is like once things level off so after driving around the city and playing for about 45 minutes just to have as much things cashed up as possible at this point the level of performance that we're getting is pretty noticeably consistent in comparison to direct x9 really the big tell here is the frame times frame times paint the whole picture here where you see that things are just far more consistent. We're not necessarily seeing a huge jump or anything like that in our averages, but it's the overall consistency of the experience that gets improved. Again, entering new areas and things like that, things that you have not gone through before, you are going to see the occasional stutter or pretty frequent stutter as things start to get loaded in. But the game will recover very quickly and once it has cached that stuff, you will not have these drops anymore. So in general, it is not going to be ground breaking it's not going to suddenly enable you to max out the game it's not going to suddenly let you enable ENBs that you couldn't run before in general all it does is it makes a game that has always had a very inconsistent performance kind of perform a little bit more consistently again it's all going to depend on the exact areas that you're in some areas are going to give you higher FPS than others and in general there is a small improvement in the overall performance in terms of the maximum frame rate but the biggest winner here is really the consistency in frame time and your 1% lows. And considering how easy it is to really install this, I would definitely recommend that you give it a go, try it out, see if it'll actually work well on your system, because at least from what I'm seeing, it does make a game that has historically had a very bad port be far more playable. Now keep in mind that with AMD's improvements with the their DirectX 11 drivers, DXVK isn't exactly as useful as it was a little while back, especially again if you're running on Windows. But DirectX 9 games in general seem 
to get some noticeable improvements and if you're using an nvidia gpu it seems to also gain some nice improvements so if you're someone that's looking into playing older titles titles that run on directx 9 you might actually have a good time giving it a go on here and trying this out with a wide variety of different games and seeing how it actually does in terms of the overall performance with that said though if playing older titles like that is kind of your thing maybe give linux a go because this is essentially natively built in it's a lot easier to implement and a lot of the times it ends up performing better so it's something to keep in mind it's not a game changer or anything like that i mean what it let us do with fallout new vegas is just consistently have the game maxed out that's not going to be the case here but it does overall smooth up the experience again on a title that historically has had pretty inconsistent performance on pc so i'll be leaving a link down below to the github for dxvk so that you can give it a go on your grand theft auto 4. one thing to keep in mind though is that you are also more than likely going to have to downgrade your version of grand theft auto 4 if you want to maximize the performance apparently version 1.0.7.0 is the best in terms of compatibility with dxvk it gives you the biggest boost you can of course just go to the one right above you could also just run the game stock if you want, but I think that GTA is worth downgrading anyway so that you can actually use some of the mods that are available for the game. They really can make a huge difference in improving this decade and a half old title. And pretty much all of the good quality mods are going to require you to actually downgrade to an older version of the game. So I'll also be linking down below to the downgrading tool that you need to downgrade your game. Again, if you're going to be using DXVK, then I would recommend just going with what what the downgrader actually tells you to use with it but it's really just up to you and it actually gives you a lot of options on what you can and can't do but anyways i hope you found this quick look at dxvk running with gta 4 to be interesting useful or entertaining if you did be sure to subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next one